All right, guys, we're back in the shop again. Uh, like to uh, kind of come into the conclusion of this part of our fabrication series. We're gonna we're gonna wind up uh, this with a little bit of aluminum welding tonight. So we've been through quite a bit of different metals, different procedures, different settings on welders and fits, and so uh, we're gonna keep going with uh, fabrication, but. We're going to stop this series here with the aluminum plate welding. So um, you'll find that when you're building the car or any project that you're doing, welding aluminum is something that a lot of people are scared of. It's not really any different than welding titanium or stainless or any other materials that we've covered, but there are some certain stipulations that you have to keep in mind. So we've been using a Miller 250 synchro wave, but tonight I'm going to use a Miller Dynasty it's an inverter TIG welder, which is a, it's a small compact unit. It's got a lot more features than like the Synchro Wave 250 will have. And it does a fantastic job on aluminum. It has a lot of different settings that are much more adjustable for aluminum penetration. So instead of welding with the 250, which is totally fine, you can make some nice aluminum welds with the Synchro Wave 250 or Synchro Wave 300. But the Dynasty is just uh, hands down better suited for that. So either way, whatever you're welding, any, any welder will work. Um, Lincoln welders are good, Miller welders are good, but you're going to weld, uh, if you're welding aluminum, you're going to switch to AC instead of DC. So we've been on all the other metals that we've done, we've been on DC, we've been, uh, our welder has been set to the DC mode, where we're going to switch to AC tonight. And if you're if you're using a dynasty, it's already going to pick up the high frequency mode that you need to weld aluminum. If you're going to be on a synchro wave 250, there's, um, there's a setting on there for high freak, which was, um, we were in the start mode. And so high frequency is that, that arc jump that's going to get the weld started. So if you were on a synchro wave and you had the, the high frequency turned off, you'd have to scratch start, meaning that you would have to drag the, the tungsten onto the material to get an arc started. And the high freak setting jumps that arc to get it started. Well, in aluminum, we want the, the high frequency on continuously. So we want a continuous run of high freak to get that um, arc stabilized on the aluminum. So if I were to use this uh, synchro wave that's sitting right next to me here, I would switch my, um, output control to, to AC and I would turn the high frequency from start to continuous and you can leave the rest of the settings alone. So I'm going to be um, welding some 060 and some 040 aluminum tonight. But um, so we don't need a lot of amperage for that. It's pretty light. If you're going to get into some heavier stuff into quarter inch and uh, uh, three eighths or half inch, some really thick stuff, the you're going to have to turn that amperage way up and the uh, Dynasty welder here, it has like a it has like a dig function where it'll it'll get in there and dig that aluminum out and make that get that puddle started and really do a nice job on it. So it's a it's a much better uh, equipped welder for welding aluminum. So again, few minor changes in uh, in your welder settings. Uh, I am using I'm going to use a one sixteenth aluminum rod tonight. Um, this particular now there's a lot of different aluminum rods and we have a lot of different styles here. So this is a 5356 rod. That's the number for this particular makeup of rod. We also have 4043. Um, we have some 1100 rods. So 1100 is going to be really soft. The 5356, we, we like it for um, general use around the shop because it works good on 6061 T6 aluminum, or it also works good on like 3003, which is a softer aluminum. That's what this uh, material is here. 6061 is going to be a little harder, and if you try to break it uh, 90 degrees, it'll most likely crack on you. But this uh, 3003 is good for building tanks or, or making mounts or something simple that you can use this in in lots of different thicknesses. We use it in uh, 080 thick and 060, 045, 032, 028. So we have lots of different um, thicknesses in it. So again, we're going to use a 5356 rod. We're welding on. Uh, 3003 aluminum and we are also going to use um, 
our hybrid tungsten, which in the weld videos before this, I was using a, uh, a thorated. I was using a 2% thorated. That's a red stripe tungsten. This is a hybrid tungsten, which um, is much more stable for the dynasty. Um, this has a purple stripe on it. If I was welding aluminum with the synchro wave, I would want to use um, a, a pure tungsten. Uh, which is a green stripe. I would use, I would change that from the thoriated to a pure tungsten, which will give you a little bit better ball on the end. And that's another thing too. The sharpening of the tungsten is going to be similar to what we did um, with all the other metals. But when we weld this with aluminum, we're going to get a little bit of a ball on the end here because of the the frequency and the AC that we're going to be using. We'll get a little bit of a rounded ball here, which is going to make that weld a lot nicer and a lot cleaner. So. Again, there, there are a lot of differences in the weld setting and the weld procedure, but I'm gonna go through a couple steps here and just kind of show you what that is so you're familiar with it because if you're building your own car or building any project that you need to use aluminum on, you need to be comfortable with it. And uh, aluminum out of all the other metals, I think takes a lot more practice to get uh, comfortable with than, than let's say even the titanium or the stainless. But um, it's, it's, it welds differently, it looks different and you've got um, a lot more heat transfer, meaning that you have to be a little more accurate on the pedal because as you start welding and you're running the bead down the part, that metal's gonna get hot a lot faster so that heat's gonna transfer through that aluminum much quicker than it did through the 4130 or the stainless. So as you, as you run your bead, you're gonna see that you need to start backing off your pedal. You're not gonna need near the amperage at the end that you do at the start. So a lot of things to pay attention to here, but especially on this thinner material, I'm gonna start out and I'm gonna give this thing some pedal to get my uh, puddle started. But as I weld, I'm gonna need to back off of that and uh, keep that puddle size the same. Because if I keep the amperage the same during the whole run, by the time you get to the end, that, that puddle is gonna be spread out and run all over the place. So I'm gonna do a quick tack on this stuff and then run a couple little sharp beads, kind of show you what that looks like. I haven't welded aluminum in a little while, so hopefully I won't fuck this up. But uh, So I'm gonna do a little quick tack on this and then I'm going to... Uh... So I've got my, my argon flow is set about the same. I've got about, uh, set at about 20. So my argon flow is gonna be the same. I also have a different cup on here too. I still have a shielded cup, but um, it's smaller. So this is a gas lens, it's a shielded lens cup. So it's got the little screen filter in it but you can see it's reduced down in size. Um, that's just what happened to be on this welder, uh, but the other cups work good too, um, but this is, this is gonna be work fine for what we're gonna do here. So uh, you'll see, also see too, this is gonna be a lot brighter than um, the, the arc flash on this is gonna be considerably brighter than when we were welding any of the other metals. Okay, and so you can see that that sounds totally different than, than what we were doing on some of the other videos. Because we've got such a high frequency running through here and we're digging into this aluminum, I just put a little, couple little corner tacks on here and uh, I'll run a few little sharp beads to kind of give you an idea what this looks like. And I want to get in a position here that I can go for a little bit so without uh, repositioning because if I was building a little square tank or, or even a round tank, I want to be able to to not make a bunch of sharp welds. So again, bear with me because uh, I haven't welded aluminum in about six months or so. I'm gonna try not to look like a total dipshit when I'm doing this. As I start this, I'm gonna get my puddle started and then I'm gonna back off on that, uh, on my heat as I run down just by watching how big the puddle gets. So I wanna keep that about the same. Okay, so another thing uh, with aluminum, you don't have to worry about the uh, argon post flow over it as much as you do with the other metals because it's gonna cool down so fast. So I can give you a little sample of what that looks like. So you can see each one of those is just a little dip of the rod and, and this doesn't look awesome, but I haven't done this for a little while, so I'll try to tune it up here in a bit. But um, I just started out my puddle here and as I was going down through there, each one of those is a dip of the rod. 
so they're spaced out a little farther and you'll have a you'll have a nice shiny puddle and you'll see that you got to go so when I'm doing this you have to go in with that rod and out away from it so you can't dick around like you are with uh, 4130 or stainless like if I was welding stainless I'd be here and I can go like this okay I can dip and move just as I'm going but with aluminum you got to get in there and get out because um, as, as you come in this heat is already trying to melt the end off of this filler rod so so I'm gonna start that puddle and as I come in here that thing is gonna be already trying almost like you're soldering it's gonna try to knock that end off and drop it down in there so you want to go in and get your puddle started you want to dip and move and pull back you know you want to get this thing so 4130 would look something like this but when I'm welding aluminum I'm gonna come in and dip and pull back I'm gonna get this away from here otherwise this this rod is gonna melt off and your puddle is gonna look like ass so um, if, I, if I'm doing this, and I'm hoping I can show you good, but I'm gonna move, you know, like along here. So if I'm doing this, let's say I'm welding this, I can weld this this way. I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna get this puddle started. I'm gonna dip, and I'm gonna pull back to about here. Now, I'm, this is a lot slower than I'm going, so I'm gonna dip, pull back, dip, pull back, dip, pull back. And you wanna go in there and, and dip your rod in and, and keep your, your puddle size about the same as the rest of it that way you have a nice straight edge here so it doesn't look like it's big and little and so I'm gonna dip and I'm gonna get this away so that my rods not hot and then I'm gonna move and dip and get back and dip and dip and dip okay so so to make this here would look something like this start go in dip pull back 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 about that speed is gonna produce this right here so I'll continue welding this and I'll kind of talk to you while I'm doing it and I'll show you what that might look like so you can kind of get an idea of how fast you can put it in there. Now with aluminum, it's, uh, it's kind of like titanium. You can start right back up here and you really won't notice a start or stop position. I'll try to talk over the, the noise here. So I've got my puddle started. I'm gonna dip, pull back, dip, pull back, dip, pull back, dip, pull back, dip, 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 dip. That's a decent looking well. Like I said, I'm a little bit out of practice on this aluminum, but uh, you gotta, if you do this stuff every couple days, you can keep a little better at it. But you can see here, I'm getting some, uh, I'm getting good penetration on it, but I'm not burning through either. And there's no uh, slag on the back side of this either. There's no really uh, burn through, so I can start right here and weld on both sides of this if I wanted to and fill that up. But um, this is a pretty common aluminum weld, and for this, um, for this thickness of material, this is 060, so that's about the size weld you want to put in there. And that's about the right width and the right temperature. So you want to get, you know, plenty of penetration, but you don't want to have a bunch of burn through on the backside. So I would say out of all the, all the uh, welding that we do, the aluminum, if you're going to weld some aluminum, you really want to spend some time uh, practicing on it because it, you know, it, it doesn't take much heat to get it to burn away. So if you're, if you're too hot on your puddle and actually, you know what I'll do, I'll, I'll finish welding this, but I'm going to, I'll turn up the heat on this thing. I'll just give it some more pedal and I'll show you what it looks like if the heat is too intense because we did that on some of the other welds. So I'll give you an idea of what this looks like um, if it's way too hot. So I'll just continue on from where I'm at. So see that's hot and it didn't take much pedal to do that. And that weld's not horrible but it's way too hot. You're gonna see that if I flip this over how much burn through, how much different that is. See, it actually burned through on both sides. It was almost melting it away. That's, that's too hot for that. This, this is what you wanna see here, penetration without any burn through. And you can see how flat it is and how wide it is because it's almost just like water. It's so hot, it just wants to run out and spread. So that is gonna to be too hot and that's gonna be hard to uh, produce a long standing weld that's gonna look decent too. So I kinda of like it to look, you know, similar to this right here is what I was looking for. This is where I restarted right here. So, so this is kind of, on this thickness of material, I'd be looking for a weld that looks similar to this. 
and then this was a restart where my puddle got hot and then I continued on. So anyway, that's, uh, that's some of the basics. I mean, we could go into a lot more in-depth aluminum welding, but um, I don't want to bore you guys with all that BS. So um, anyway, that's going to wrap up our welding series, our tube fitting, our, some of our tools. Uh, this has been kind of a fun series to do. We're going to continue on with a lot more uh, of our fabrication techniques because I want to share with you guys some, uh, some more technical stuff. We're going to get into some, some metal bending and some, uh, even some more tubing versus plate, and we'll get into some sheet metal stuff. Um, but I'm going to start a new series for that that, that will be uh, more in-depth. So we'll do some, uh, some layout on some sheet metal. We'll bend some titanium sheet metal, different things like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this series. It was, uh, it was fun going through all and, and uh, making this stuff up and uh, uh, showing you what we do here. So again, TIG welding is not something that you just pick up and do. It takes a lot of practice. Uh, it takes patience. It takes a little research on how to set the machine and try different settings, have the right, have the right tungsten, have the right, right welding rod. All that stuff plays into effect. So uh, I would suggest getting a, an auto darkening helmet because it really helps uh, with you to stay focused so you don't have to flip the uh, helmet down when you're ready to start. But um, take your time. Um, watch the videos three or four times. I mean, I've done some short little welds. I didn't do a lot of extensive welding because I didn't want you guys to sit there and watch me just do welds. But uh, there's been some good information in there that's very useful. And um, I'd like to expand on that and show you some more techniques with that we use here at the shop. So again, I'm going to sign off on this. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next series.